What's up guys? Welcome to Anime Kahai. If you want to help me out, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Using disintegration to strip only the armor off someone, after all, is an impossible feat unless you had perfect control over the spell. Really, though, it wasn't that long ago since I had Shuna and Adelman work together to learn holy magic. And she'd already learned the hardest spell? What a magic phenom she was. Her parser skill must have been offering her tons of support. Regardless, though, it meant she beat Gaia without breaking a sweat. That left Hanada, but the results were already clear as day. General Reiner! Stop playing around! Silence that impertinent woman at once. You must defeat the Demon Lord. We have no time for games. Gabon and Elric, failing to grasp the situation, were shouting at Reiner in unison. Reiner couldn't move. Hanada's stare was just too withering for him. Only after that throw did he finally realize just how much stronger she was. Not coming back for me? Then how about I head over to you? The moment Hanada moved to take a step forward. <laughs> With one of the most pathetic screams ever uttered in the world, Reiner buried his head in his hands and fell to his knees. A steaming liquid was leaking out from his crotch. Holy crap. Who was wetting their pants now, huh? It was so exasperating that I didn't know what to say. What? General Reiner? What? What has happened? As strong as you are, Hanada the Saint should pose no challenge at all. Seeing someone refuse to accept reality like this is scary, isn't it? It made it so easy to issue the cruelest of orders to people. Reiner just kneeled there, tears and spittle intermingling all over his face. So much for that. It was a mismatch from the start, but I assumed this was the end of it. With that settled, I looked around at the people standing by their ground floor seats. The most prominent one was Elric, in the front row and acting strangely. The sons of the Velt were huddled next to him, but I doubted they wanted a fight. They were keeping a natural distance, appealing to me with their body language that they wanted nothing to do with this. Alright, Elric, sorry, Prince Elric? You picked a fight with me, so what are you gonna do now? Keep going? Ah, uh, um, no. And you guys who stood up. I'm assuming your home nations fully sanction your behavior today, right? So can I presume them guilty of the same crimes? No, that, uh. Sir Rimuru, please, one moment. I mean, Lord Rimuru. Please allow me to speak for a moment. I was greeting them with a smile, they were keeping their pallid faces down. A few of them were trying their hardest to plead their case, but I ignored them. Soe had forced them to remain on their feet, so all these counselors who incurred my hostility could do right now was plead for mercy. Whether I engaged with them or not, they were powerless. This way, I knew I had the upper hand. From the side, it may have looked like a pretty little girl nonchalantly lording it over a bunch of grown-ups. A rare sight if you ever saw one. Comical, probably. No way a faceless crowd like this could ever oppress a demon lord. Their lack of common sense, or a mind too weak to notice reality, just lost them the day. And what a sloppy strategy. I can't believe they really thought they'd beat me and turn me into some kind of puppet demon lord. I suppose Hanada was right. They wanted to rile me into making the first move, but... So how to settle this? Well, hang on. Over half the counselors were subjected to spiritual interference, their desires stimulated. Without me intervening, they would have sided with Elric, and his measure would have passed, putting me in a bad spot. No matter the internal circumstances, it was nigh impossible to reverse a completed vote. Things only worked out like this thanks to Raphael. But clearly, someone's out to get one over on me here. Report. Murderous will detect it. The target is the subject Elric. Oh crap. My magic sense skill was picking it up, too. Over a mile away, someone was eyeing this chamber with malicious intent. But what would they do from this far? I promptly invoked Mind Accelerate and gauged the situation. Via magic sense, I saw a girl with red hair and kind of a wild look. In her hand was something small, black, and metallic, a handgun. Huh? A handgun from that range? And I didn't know how far one could shoot, but... Understood. It is the Walther P99, a compact, lightweight, but highly capable pistol with an effective range of 55 yards. I didn't need to know all that, thanks. Maybe it's a really good gun, but if it can't clear a football field, it's pointless. Our chamber is almost in the center of Anglacia, built inside a special security zone. Anti-magic defenses are built into its walls, sturdy enough that your run-of-the-mill attack couldn't even make a dent. Besides, any bullet fired would be subject to the physical laws of gravity and air resistance. 
Maybe it was enhanced with magic or skills, but if so, there was no reason not to use a full-on sniper rifle. Of course, you needed to see a target to shoot it, and there shouldn't have been any way for the girl to see Elric from her spot. Even if she had access to magic sense to pinpoint his location, there was a wall in our direct path, making a sniper strike impossible. After the recent assassination of Duke Muse, security had been beefed up around the chamber. I was on my guard as well, and I had already confirmed that this building was a poor choice for an assassination strike from far away. So her behavior shouldn't have meant anything to us. Shouldn't have. Or was she aiming for a ricochet that had changed the path of? The moment I had the thought, the red-haired woman fired her handgun. In the midst of dilated time, I could see the bullet fire out from the barrel, flying at blazing speed, only to be swallowed into a black hole that appeared out of nowhere. Huh? As I goggled, the bullet disappeared. Report. This is spatial connection, a type of spatial motion. Spatial connection was just that, a skill that connected two recognized points in space together. If the distance involved was small and the portal tiny, it apparently didn't take that much effort to deploy. But I didn't have the time to listen to that explanation. The red-haired woman had used magic sense to pinpoint our positions, then aimed carefully and launched her skill so her bullet would reappear within close range of Elric. Thanks to that, she was about to assassinate someone across a full mile of walls, homes, and who knows what else. A small black hole opened up in the air, about a foot and a half from the side of Elric's head. Coming out of it was a sure-kill bullet running at a quarter mile a second. It was a point-blank shot, and there was nothing blocking it from drawing nearer and nearer to him. Slowly but surely, I watched it unfold. But I couldn't do anything. My voice wouldn't reach him in time. Nor could I move quickly enough to try to stop it. It is not a problem. Launch the ultimate skill Belzebuth, Lord of Gluttony? Yes. No. Oh, that'll work? I thought as I invoked it. And then, whoa, neat. Ignoring all time and space, the bullet tumbled into my hand, all its energy gone. Are you okay? A disturbed-looking Hanada was already talking to Elric as she approached him. The Velt leader appeared just as shocked as he stole a glance at me. I said nothing as I checked up on Elric. He didn't seem to understand what was going on and was just staring into space. Only a couple of us did know, really. But whatever happened must have triggered the building's magic security network, because alarms began going off chamber-wide. The session would have to adjourn for a while. So eh, capture the assassin. I have a replication on its way. As we waited for the counselors to calm down, I carried out the tasks demanded of me. Already, there was an investigation happening nearby. You could kill a person with this? Yes, it's called a bullet. You need a special tool to fire it, but there's not one near us at the moment. So the assassin was targeting Prince Elric. But what for? To frame the demon Lord Rimuru, of course. Indeed, indeed. If Prince Elric was killed at this point in time, suspicions would naturally turn to Lord Rimuru. It'd certainly complicate our efforts to admit Tempest into the council. Yes, that was probably the real motive. These fools were likely set up as disposable pawns the whole time. The security chief, sons of the Velt leader, Chairman Lester, and Hanata were discussing matters here. I was certainly glad to be cleared of doubt. Elric was safe now, although he'd need to face up to the commotion he caused in the chamber later. Am, am I being targeted even now? He asked, his face haggard. He might have been a fool, but I didn't want him dead or anything. I think it's all right now, Elric, sorry, Prince Elric. When the assassin missed you, that put an end to the ambitions of whoever wanted you dead. At this point, there's no reason for them to try again. By now, it was no longer possible to frame me for murder. Elric was no longer of use to them, you could say, and therefore he had no need to fear for his life. But I'm the prince of a superpower nation. People could exploit me in so many ways. Um, you think so? Maybe he was vulnerable, as someone in line for the throne, before he pulled all that nonsense today. But he wasn't officially crown prince, and there were other people in the line of succession, so at this point. If Elric had actually succeeded today, he would have been a hero, I suppose, but Anglacia wasn't easy enough on its royalty that an idiot prince doing dumb things would be allowed on the throne. Maybe the people would sympathize with his motives, but they'd never forgive him for screwing up. After today, Elric's chances of being King Elric someday were as good as gone. But hey, life's not all about becoming king, is it? You'll probably need to atone for today somehow, but after that, why don't you try reconsidering your future a little? I mean, I became a demon lord just by sort of drifting along, but I never really wanted to be one or anything. 
but there's no going back on it now, so I figure I may as well take advantage. A demon lord offering me comfort? I thought you'd be scarier, more vengeful. I'm not trying to comfort you, but generally, I'm a pacifist. Elric's shoulders slumped down as he resigned himself to his fate. I was a fool to be tricked like that, Gabon. It's time for you to take responsibility. Prince? You were the one who approached me. I fell for your cajoling, and I must atone for that, but you had best prepare to do the same, Count Gabon. Elric had now fully given himself up to the security team. It was pretty obvious that Gabon was the main person behind all this, rounding up Reiner and Elric and convincing them to cause this wild scene. I'm sure someone's using Gabon, too, that mystery organization, perhaps. I can't write it off as a conspiracy theory. It's probably best to conduct a full investigation, but not even Soe's found any clues yet. If we can capture the sniper, though, maybe that'll lead to something. Let's hold out hope for that, and meanwhile, there's someone else I need to consult about. So, Gabon, there's something I wanted to ask. I turn my eyes to Gabon in custody. What? What does a demon lord want from me? Even now, his attitude still had problems. I want you to tell me what you were scheming when you enticed Prince Elric to join you. Hum, I'm not sure what you mean. I don't know anything. What? Are you abandoning me? And where's your evidence? Yes, I was asked by the prince to invite you here, but I certainly had no idea he would try something like that. You will not talk your way out of this, Sir Gabon. Both the other counselors and I in this chamber will speak against your case. Johan was having none of it, and neither were the assorted representatives nodding along with him, including a few being forced to keep standing. No problem finding witnesses, then. But it's true. I didn't know. The prince designed all of this. All I did was follow his orders. Nonsense. You're the very one who procured the orb and brought the plan to me. I can't say I know what you're talking about. Again, you will need to find some proof. That's it for this video guys. Thank you for always watching my videos and supporting my channel. Shout out to Viborgarg, Josia Ingada, DJ 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 DJ, Sama Nisan, Pickle Rick, Speedy Sand, Mark Bozeman, Seth Amboy, MTA, and last but not least, shout out to Paul Smith. I'll see you guys in the next video.